Storytime, I became a stepmom at 22 and my stepkids hate me. So a little background information, I was 22 and working at Hooters, and I had this one regular who literally came in every single day that I worked. I mean, it wasn't really creepy because I did give him my schedule because he tipped really well. But that's besides the point. The one night he asked me out and obviously I knew that he was going to pay for our dinner. So I said yes because I was hungry and I did not want to pay for food. So anyways, I go on this date and I actually end up really liking him just to find out that he is 40 years old. Fast forward a few months, we start dating, and he realizes that I still live at home with my mom and dad. So he's like, oh, like, you can move in with me, but first you need to meet my kids. And I, like, thought that his kids were going to be, like, two and three years old. No, when I went over to dinner the one night at their house, there were four kids who were literally all above the age 13. And every single one of the girls gave me a death stare as I sat down in my chair. So like I said, we're all sitting down in the dining room, and there's four kids, there's one boy, three girls, the one boy's 14 and all the other girls are 15, 16, and 19. And we're gonna call my boyfriend James. James is like, okay, well, I'm gonna go back to the kitchen and finish cooking. You guys should bond a little bit. So he leaves me alone with these little fucking roaches and they just start firing shots at me. They're like, you're a gold digger, aren't you? Don't worry, my dad will never marry you so you're not gonna get any of his money. So after that, I told James that they need to warm up to me a little bit more before I move in. So for the next month, we would try to plan things with the kids. But anytime that I was gonna be there, every single one of them would be like, we're not going, we hate her. Eventually, James just kind of said, fuck it. And he asked me to marry him. So I moved in and then a week later, Later we got married. His kids didn't show up to the wedding and James had to go on a work trip. So I was moving some of my stuff into the house from the car and the kids fucking locked me out of the house. This has all been within the span of five months. What should I do? Story time about how my bank might have ruined my chances of going to an Olivia Rodrigo concert. So a little background information. In December, I got tickets to Olivia's concert. I thought it would be the perfect Christmas gift for my sister and I to go to California and go to her concert. And I got two floor seats. So I was super excited when I gave her the tickets. We were both like screaming, you know, that we were going to be going to a concert. We had the best seats. Well, knowing that I had the tickets, I hadn't checked on them for a few months. And this concert is on May 20th of 2022. Well, a few days ago, I was going on Ticketmaster to check the tickets, and it said that they had been voided, and I had no idea why, so I was frantically trying to figure out what the hell had happened to my tickets. And I didn't want my sister thinking, oh my god, like, she really didn't get the tickets. So I was sending emails with Ticketmaster, and they said that somebody had filed a dispute. If you don't know what that means, that means somebody was like, hey, that's my money, I'm taking it back. So like I said, pretty much somebody was like, hey, I want my money back, and the tickets were no longer there. Mind you, I was already charged in December, and now it's April. So I call my bank, and I'm like, hey, like, what the fuck is going on? My money is missing. Um, these people say they don't have it, aka Ticketmaster. And they're like, oh my god, like, we're so sorry. We thought that it was like a fraudulent charge, so we just disputed it. So now, of course, I am extremely pissed off and upset. So then when they realized they fucked up, they were like, okay, we'll give the money back to them. That's completely fine. And then I called Ticketmaster, and I talked to somebody. They said, that's fine. Just let them know out the door that there was a mix-up. And I'm like, okay, but they're not just gonna believe me, so can you send me an email saying that's what happened? And right after that, they hung up the call, and I've been trying to get a hold of Ticketmaster ever since, and they haven't been answering. So go check your tickets, and please tag Ticketmaster. Story time. My boyfriend cheated on me with the girl best friend. So a little background information, I was 17 and a junior in high school, and my boyfriend and I had been dating for a year. But just a little backstory about when we got together. So there were definitely some red flags that I missed, okay? One of them being that he had a girl best friend. And I don't care what y'all have to say if that makes me insecure or what, but coming from someone who has been the girl best friend, I knew this was not good at all. Especially whenever we first started dating and she was still being super friendly with him. Meaning she would hold his hand, she would hang on him 24-7. And when I told him I was super uncomfortable with that and I felt like there needed to be some boundaries, he was like, um, yeah, I told you what it was whenever we got together. So if you don't like that, then just break up with me. Looking back on it now, that was also a red flag because I feel like he was telling me to break up with him so that way he didn't have to break up with me. So like I said, she would still hang all over him and he pretty much told me, if you don't like that, then you can leave. 
Obviously, I did not want to leave because I liked him and he was my boyfriend. So I just kept putting up with it and eventually, you know, we got six months into our relationship. So at that point, I'm thinking maybe I have a little bit more authority, you know, to be like, hey, I don't like the way that she acts around you. You guys can't hang out like that anymore. And they would hang out alone together. He would take her to dinner. Which I literally tried telling him that the stuff that they do together is relationship stuff. And he was like, that's not true at all because we did all this stuff before you and I even got together. So anyways, like I said, six months in, I'm like, hey, I don't like the way that you guys are hanging around each other. Once again, he gives me the same excuse. So he pretty much said that he didn't care. And the one night him and I were supposed to hang out, but he canceled on me last minute. And her and I didn't get along and she never Snapchatted me before, but then I get a Snapchat of her and him making out at his house. Storytell allow how my sister sold my nudes. Yes, my own sister. So a little background information, I was in 12th grade and I was pretty popular. And my sister on the other hand, she was in 9th grade. Not even saying this to boost my ego, but she was jealous of me and everybody could tell. Maybe because of the fact that she didn't have her high school glow up, you know, she low-key still looked like a 6th grader. And there were very few vines who gave her attention and some of the guys would even tell her that I was hotter than her. Well, that did not help the situation at all. For a week, I even paid attention to any of these guys because I had a boyfriend. And my sister and I still shared a room even though our brothers got their own rooms. So she could literally go through my shit anytime she wanted. Well, since we shared a room and I never thought that she would sell my nudes, friends, I would take these exposing pictures of myself while she was in the room. Well, she had this one friend named Jessica who also was weirdly obsessed with me. I think she was saying how funny it would be to sell someone's nudes. So like I said, my sister had this friend and the one day they were trying to about how funny it would be to sell somebody's pics. We all laughed, joked about it, the conversation was over and done with, I thought that was it. Like in all honesty, I thought it was one of those things where you guys make plans to do something and then after the conversation you never cop about it again and you never actually do what you said you were gonna do because it was so out of pocket. So my sister's friend slept over that night and I looked up, went to school earlier because I have volunteer work to do so my sister usually just takes the bus. Well, I still leave off my computer at school so I called my sister, asked her if she could grab it and bring it into school. Now, my computer is connected to my phone. Well, your fake assigned to be little creeps and they went on my computer and they found my pictures and they sent them to themselves. And since my phone and computer are hooked up, I was able to see that they sent the pictures to themselves. So I start glowing up her phone, but by first period, I had a bunch of people telling me that they were about to buy my pictures. My sister literally made an ad and put it on Snapchat. My boyfriend broke up with me and I never talked to her at her. Um, story time about how this boy stabbed me with a pencil in kindergarten. So a little background information, I was six years old again in kindergarten, obviously. I'm not gonna lie, this story kind of shows that it doesn't matter how old a child is, they can literally still be very mean and yeah. Well, during the middle of the school year, there was this new kid who came to our class and his name was Freddy. Now, Freddy coming in in the middle of the year was kind of sad because everybody already had their friends. They didn't really want to talk to the new kid. And what made it even worse is was the fact that he was a teacher's pet and he was the teacher's favorite. So he was always picked to go to the board and be the wine leader, which made the kids hate him even more. For example, during lunch, Freddy would go and try to sit with some of the kids and they would call the teacher over, say that she was doing something that was annoying them or really gross. And the teachers would remove him and put him in a table alone by himself. And I was one of the kids that didn't really make fun of him. I just kind of sat back and laughed, which I know is terrible. But like I said, everybody would pretty much bully him. And I was one of the kids that just sat back and laughed, didn't say anything to him directly. Eventually, we were getting in trouble for discluding him. We would all have to stay inside during recess with our heads down on the desk in the dark. So then everybody acted like they were going to include him. Like the one time they were like, okay, we're playing hide and seek, you know, you go hide. And then they never went to find him. So then this kid actually started getting violent. My guess is because the teachers and principal were not doing anything about it. And everybody was walking, you would purposely trip kids. This one time, this girl bought in parcels for the whole class, and she didn't give him one. This is because he felt sick the one day, and all the kids went out to recess, and he went around and broke every single pencil. And I came in and I found it, so I told the teacher. And then during nap time, he put his mat on me, and when I finally fall asleep, he literally comes over and stabs me in the back of the neck with a pencil. Storytime about why my sister is probably worse than yours. So let him I find information, my sister and I were both 16 and in our sophomore year of high school. And yes, my sister and I were twins, but we were the complete opposite. 
She was the girly girl and I was a tomboy. But the summer before our sophomore year, we buzzed off grounded because we were driving my dad's car without our license and we wrecked it. So we ended up summing all summer together, which was very unusual because it was like her and I were acquaintances living in the same house. Well, over that summer we got super close and she ended up turning me into a girly girl. She taught me how to take care of my skin, do my hair, do my makeup, and how I dress. Now mind you, once we got into high school, she never stoked me because I wasn't a part of the little clique that she was in. So she was like, yeah, you can finally hang out with my friends and I am super excited. So if school starts, I end up becoming friends with all of her friends and my sisters really get friends with this one boy. But she had only said that she never liked him like that. So she introduced us, him and I started talking and we both end up liking each other. So like I said, my sister and I start school, I become friends with her friends and she introduces me to this guy that she's been best friends with for a while. Him and I end up hugging, I really like him, he really likes me. And my sister would always hype me up to be like, oh my god, he should get with him, he's a, such a nice guy. Guy, and you guys will look so great together. So the one week he asked me if I wanted to go on a date with him and of course I said yes. So I ran to my sister's room. I was so excited to tell her. So I don't arm her door. I go in and I'm like, oh my gosh, guess what? She's like, what? I'm like, he asked me out on a date and she just sits and stares at me. And when I asked her what's wrong, she's like, oh my God, you knew that I liked him. You're such a bad sister. I would have never done this to you. So then I started to feel bad, but then I didn't because I remembered how she used to hype me up. So the next day, a few hours before my date, she comes in my room. She's like, hey, I'm really sorry about how I acted yesterday. I would love to help you get ready for your date if you'll let me. I feel so bad. And with sister, so of course I get over it. And I tell her, yes, I want her to help me. Life for part three. Story time about why I will never babysit ever again. So a little background information, I was 17 and a senior in high school. And my parents were super annoyed about the fact that I hadn't had a job since I was 14. So their friends just happened to need a babysitter. So they told me that I had to do it. So fast forward, I go over there super early in the morning and the mom had already left for work. And the dad, who we're gonna call Will, he was just about to leave. And before he walked out the door, he told me that there was a list of things that needed to be done before they got home. So their daughter, Autumn, who was five years old, she was still sleeping. And I was reading through the list and it was just normal stuff, like nap time at two o'clock, no pop after seven o'clock, that sort of stuff. And then it had an arrow pointing towards the back. And when I flipped the page over, it said, by the way, Autumn is scared to bathe by herself, so please get a shower with her. And I was not comfortable with that, so I called my mom and I told her about it. So like I said, I flipped the page over and it said that their daughter was scared to bathe alone, so I would have to take a shower with her. And I called my mom and I told her about it. And she was like, well, honey, that doesn't sound that weird. Don't you remember when your little brother was scared of the toilet and we would have to take him to the bathroom and stand there with him for 20 minutes while he tried to go to the bathroom? So I was super annoyed that she was even comparing those two situations because first of all, that was my little brother. Second of all, this is just freaking weird. So I told her to bring my bathing suit over and then I did everything on the list. Fast forward, Autumn said that she really liked me so her parents wanted me to come over and babysit again. So I did and whenever I was setting up the shower that day, there was a stack of towels sitting on the toilet and when I picked it up to move it, a camera fell out of the pile of towels as soon as I picked it up and it was recording. I was really weirded out, but I wanted to show it to my mom. So I put it in my book bag and went home that night, like for part three. Story tell about how my best friend was obsessed with me. And I'm not saying obsessed as in, oh my God, like, you know, she does her hair like me. No, I'm saying in a creepy way. So a little background information, I was 14 and it was the summer before I was going into high school and I have this best friend who we're gonna call Madison. Now, I met Madison like a month before school ended. She was one of those kids that nobody really liked and nobody wanted to be near, but we were partnered up in this one class and she's actually really funny. So since summer just started, I invited her over to have a sleepover at my house. Everything went well, we were swimming, we watched movies. But my house was in a really wooded area, so if you had certain phone carriers, you wouldn't get any reception. So she asked if she could use my iPad to text her dad. And it was like 11 o'clock at night, so I let her use it. And then we went to sleep. Well, I woke up around 3 in the morning because my phone kept going off. But like I said, I woke up at 3 in the morning because my phone kept going off. And it wasn't dinging or anything, it was just a light flashing when it would go off and on. So I look around for Madison, and then I see my bathroom light is on, but the door is shut. So I just brush it off and I go on my phone and I see a bunch of text messages that were sent from me, but they weren't sent from me. 
Like, obviously, somebody had went on my iPad and started sending people messages. So I look at these messages, and it's all texting Madison. And I kid you not, it's literally pictures of me while I'm sleeping that she sent to herself. Like, there was a picture of my hair, a picture of one of my birthmarks. And then on her side of the nightstand, there was literally a lock of my hair. Like, she cut my hair off. And it was in a Ziploc bag. So at this point, I'm actually really creeped out and I go and tell my mom. And my mom talked to her mom and apparently she's done this before. Story time, I didn't know that I was dating my best friend's brother. So a little background information, I was 17 and a junior in high school. And I know you guys are probably thinking, how the fuck didn't you know that you were dating your best friend's brother? And we're gonna call my best friend Rima and we're gonna call her brother Alex. So I had met Alex whenever I was in fifth grade. We never hung out outside of school. We were more of just like friends in school. But I only met Rima last year. Also, Alex was a year older than us. Well, one of the art teachers who usually taught the senior class, she just gave birth to her baby, so they decided to mix both of our classes, aka the one that Alex was in. Well, my art teacher decided to pair us all into partners and have us do an art project. So I got paired up with Alex. Fast forward, we end up liking each other and we start dating. And usually whenever Rima and I hung out, we would always hang out over my house because she said her family was annoying and Alex and I would only hang out during school. So like I said, we always hung out at my house because she never wanted to hang out at hers. But this weekend, her whole family was supposed to be gone. So she wanted to throw a party and she was like, OMG, you should definitely invite that guy that you like. Now listen, I know you guys think it's weird that she probably didn't even know that I had a boyfriend. Whenever Haya talked to people that were best friends with her before, and yes, multiple best friends. This girl went through best friends like she goes through underwear. They had all said to not let her know who you like or who you're dating because she would either try to get with them or she would get with them. And if she couldn't get with them, she would just send them nudes out of nowhere. So fast forward, I get to the party. She comes up to me. She's like, I'm so fucking annoyed. My brother's here. And then she was like, oh, did you bring the guy that you like? And I was like, no. And then I walk into the living room and I see my boyfriend. So I go over and I give him a hug and a kiss and Rima starts screaming at me. After that, she told her brother that I bullied her so that way he would break up with me. And he did. Story time about my toxic ex-best friend. So a little bit of background information, I had a very close guy friend who were really called Max. Now Max was two years older than me, but due to our families being super close, him and I became best friends. Growing up, I saw him as kind of an older brother. And then eventually as we grew up, I saw him as my best friend. Until I realized that he was actually a terrible person. And I missed all of his times that he was not a real friend. Like one, our first fight, I told him something that I didn't want anybody else knowing. And what do you know, by and after I tell him, my family knows, his family knows, my crush knows, all of our friends know. Um, I feel just like probably should have distanced myself, but he apologized that maybe he brems again. That was sign number one, sign number two, his huge change in attitude. One second, he would be extremely weird to me, and then he would be this really sweet and caring guy, and his apologies were the best. So it was really hard not to forgive him. He was like a master manipulator. Number three, we only talked whenever it was convenient for him. Like seriously, we would never talk unless he needed something. I think we left off on sign number three, which was the only time that Lee would talk was what it was convenient for him. He would never reach out, which left me being the one who was constantly trying to preserve our friendship or whatever was left of it. Like all of our messages were literally me and it made me seem really needy. And like I was putting in way too much effort because he would literally answer was the most simple messages. Like, yeah, okay. Sure. And he would only talk to me whenever he was with his friends. Sign number four. It felt like he was embarrassed of me. Now, I know that I was two years younger than him, but we were so friends, and I really don't think that's that much of a difference. Like, he would never want to be seen with me. The last sign, he would literally always tell the body behind my back. And I thought this was just rumors at first, until finally several people told me that it was not a rumor. He would say things like, oh, she's ugly, she's so immature, she's annoying and childish, she's so annoying. And then I finally decided to cut him off. Because if the that outweighed the good, was it really worth keeping that person in my life? Story time about why you just can't bring some friends around your boyfriend. So a little background information, I'm a 17 and a junior in high school. 
and I have been best friends with this one girl who we're gonna call Lily for about two years. Now, Lily and I weren't your ordinary best friends. We were the ones that would party together, but we would never talk about anything serious. And when I mean serious things, I mean like a secret that you don't want anybody to know. Just for a little example, the one time I told her that I thought I was pregnant, and clearly she knew that I was super scared, and I told her I don't want anybody to know, please don't say anything. Um, yeah, in about 30 minutes, I had like 20 people asking me if I was pregnant, and then somehow my parents found out. She's also the best friend that you keep away from any guy that you like. Well, I went to dating this guy who worked at the court garage for six months, and obviously now that I have a boyfriend, I've stopped hanging out with her as much. But my whole thing is she would never give me a heads up on plans. She would literally just text me and be like, hey, we're going out tonight. But I would touch her back and I would be like, sorry, I can't. I already have plans with Jared. So this made her really upset. So like I said, she was getting very upset with the fact that she would ask me to make plans last minute and I would tell her that I'm busy with my boyfriend. And this went on throughout Jared and I's whole relationship. But it wasn't like I would ignore her. I would still hang out with her. I just wouldn't go and party and stuff like that because I respected my relationship. She would also always ask me to not bring my boyfriend to these parties. And that's another reason why I wouldn't go. She says one night, she's like, listen, you know, come out with me, you can bring your boyfriend, it won't be a problem. Which was a shocker, so I was a little bit skeptical, but I said okay. So we go to this party, and usually whenever I'm with Lily, I get really messed up, and I was trying to pace myself this night. And then she's like, come on, you don't mind if she gets drunk, right, Jared? Of course, him wanting me to have fun, he said no, he doesn't mind. She calls us a newer, and then she asked for my boyfriend's Snapchat just so that when she could check up on us because I was too drunk. The entire ride home, Lily is blowing up Jared's phone, and we just think that she's trying to check on us. Um, no. Instead, when we got home, he opened his phone, and it was actually Lily sending him a bunch of naked pictures. 